Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, Tyla and I are back, and today we're going to do a sweet potato hash. Um, sweet potatoes and other root vegetables are in season now as the weather gets colder. So, we're trying to feature some of those seasonal produce because it's cheaper to eat seasonal produce than to try and eat out of season. So, in our pan here, I have already cut up a couple of sweet potatoes. I've put a can of garbanzo beans or chickpeas in there and some garlic um, with a little bit of oil. So Kyle, I'm going to have you slice up our bell pepper and our red onion. And we're going to add those as well. And you could um, add whatever beans you want to your hash. I like to add beans. You don't have to add beans if you don't want to. Um, but it adds protein and extra fiber and other good nutrients like magnesium, good job, some B vitamins. And so I've done this same recipe uh, with black beans, pinto beans, so just kind of whatever you like to add. And the same goes for the veggies. Um, you don't have to do pepper in yours if you don't want to. Um, you could add carrots, you could add other root veggies, it's up to you. That's kind of uh, the nice thing about doing a hash is you get to add whatever ingredients you want. So you're going to cut them into chunks, Kyla, about that big, okay? Look, chunks, not slices, chunks. So cut it like that. Oh, okay. And then, nope. And then slice it like this way too. Smaller. Yep. So this is like the perfect size. These ones are good sizes. So the do ones like those. So the smaller you cut your vegetables, the quicker it'll cook. <clears throat> so that's something to keep in mind. Um, so I did use the low sodium garbanzo beans from Super One. Um, I still drained and rinsed them though, get rid of that extra salt. And while she's doing that, I'm just gonna add some seasonings to our hash. So we're gonna roast this all in the oven at 400 degrees. Um, so I'm just adding some black pepper. Do a little bit of garlic powder. A little bit of paprika. The seasoning is up to you. This is kind of just what I typically do when I'm putting a hash together, but again, it's up to you how much seasoning you want and what kinds you want to add. salt. Gives a tiny bit. Helps with tenderizing. Um, and then we also have some strips of LP from the dry meat social. So we'll just kind of cook that up with bacon. But we'll, we'll wait on that because um, it's going to take a little bit for our sweet potatoes to cook. So we do have elk meat here at the Elmo Clinic in our food pantry. We have a little bit of the ground left and more of this kind of sliced. Um, we also have some wild rice now in our pantry from the Red Lake Nation. Um, some other good stuff. So. If you ever need food and you're in the Elmo area, you can always come here. Um, so other things I got for our hash, I got a little bit of parsley. Um, we'll add that at the end um, for people that want it. And also some black olives, which I drained and rinsed those as well. But like I said, it's really whatever, whatever foods you want to add. Um, to your hash, it's kind of up to you. 
Sometimes I like to put like a fried egg on top, add a little extra protein. But since we'll be adding that elk meat, I figured we'd just stick with that. So if you look at our meal, we're going to have a whole bunch of different colors in it. We're going to have orange from the sweet potatoes, green from the bell pepper, red or purple from the red onion, some white and brown from the chickpeas or garbanzo beans. And so when you look at your meal and you see you're eating a lot of colors, that's a good sign because um, it means you're getting a lot of different fruits and vegetables in. You're getting vitamin A uh, from the sweet potato. You're getting potassium from the bell pepper. Um, and you want to eat a colorful dish and a lot of get a lot of different vitamins and minerals so that your body can, you know, function properly. So your blood sugar and blood pressure stays in check. Um, so that your immune system is working correctly. That's one good way um, to ensure you're getting all the vitamins and minerals and nutrients you need is by looking to see how colorful your plate is. Um, you could also, you know, add tomatoes. You could do green beans. You could, like I said, do other root vegetables, carrots, parsnips, rutabagas. Those are in season now. Radishes, turnips. Um, if you want, you can even add some leafy vegetables. I'll probably do that more towards the end because they'll crisp up a lot in the oven if you cook them with the potatoes. Um, but you could, you know, add kale, add spinach. Even if it's like frozen, just heat it up. Canned. All, all, you know, fresh vegetables, regardless if it's canned, frozen, fresh, they all have good nutrients. Mm -hmm. Yep, that one too. All good nutrients. And canned is just really focusing on rinsing and draining um, or getting the low sodium varieties um, for the salt content. Frozen are just as nutritious as fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, the only thing to watch out for with frozen is if it comes with like a sauce packet or cheese. Um, usually those are really high in salt or fat or sugar. So it's better if you just get vegetables that don't have the sauce and then add your own cheese um, later or season it a little later. As you get better and better with your knife skills, um, you'll cut things in more uniform shapes. Um, and the purpose of doing that is just so that it all cooks the same. So if you get really big chunks, and really small chunks, they won't cook the same. So some will still be hard and crunchy, some will be really soft or even burned. Um, that just takes some practice. Okay. So it's all mixed up now. This is uh, what we got to work with. This is what our hash looks like so far. Sweet potatoes, red onion, green bell pepper, chickpeas, garlic with some seasoning, some oil. So we're, we're going to put it in the oven. It's set at 400. We're going to set it. Um, for about 45 minutes and about halfway through we'll start cooking the meat because the meat's uh, already cut pretty thin so it shouldn't take too long we're just going to kind of cook it like bacon and then we'll cut it up and put it on top alright so we have our elk meat that's kind of cut up thin, kind of like flank steak. We're just going to cook it in a pan here. I sprayed it with some of this extra virgin olive oil cooking spray. I'm just adding some pepper. 
So we'll let that kind of cook up. Good job. 